kind of question do you have about today's homework? Oh, I yes. still didn't figure out how to do the Lagrangian Wolf plot. Yeah. If that's not on the final, is it? No. Um, no, <laughs> no. It's not a preview yeah. final. Let's see, did everybody get a copy of the preview final? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's not on, it's not on there. Do you need another copy? Yeah, so I can do it a couple times. Okay. Um, there is, um, I think this is number 26 or something. Nothing makes sense anymore. <laughs> I think it's 26. What? 27? I think it's 26. Okay. Um, what, what the numbers of the lectures are. <laughs> okay, I guess there's 30, there would be a 30 officially, but we had two exams, right? But, and also there was a snow day, so I don't know, yeah, so something like that. Okay. That you could actually calculate it, probably. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, are you serious? <laughs> so... This is the thing we have to store in our brains all, all year long. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> anyway, um, let's see. There was, so what was the, yeah, exactly. What was what was the problem with the Blurange multiplier? Should we go over that a little bit? Yeah. I just had an idea of, of, of maybe working some of that out. Um, oh, yeah. Let's do a simple problem with Lagrange multipliers, right? How do you do this? How do you minimize... Uh, f of x1, x2, x3 equals e to the x1 plus e to the x2 plus e to the x3. You wouldn't have given anything this easy, probably, on you? <laughs> your comprehensive exam, but that's all right. Subject to uh, x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 0. We think that is. That looks a little easier than the ones you had in your homework. Because I didn't even attempt to fit down the homework. This is meant for Lagrange multipliers. Maybe I should put uh, the Lagrange multiplier problem with this extra credit. Okay? On the, on the final exam. Okay? So, how do you uh, solve that? I wouldn't even have to, I introduced the function f, I wouldn't have to have introduced that, right? I just would have minimized this quantity so that you can see this. It's a pretty easy guess, right? What's the guess? Well, let's do one example, right? What's e to the minus 1 plus e to the 0 plus e to the 1? Can I get anything? How big is that? That comes out to be, you know, 3. It comes out to be 2.7 is 1. This comes out to be a little bit, so this is about 4. four. Yeah, it should be all zeros. It should be all zero, right? Okay, so obvious, okay, yeah. in this case. So now prove it. Gradient. Okay, so take the gradient. What do you mean by the gradient? Gradient is, what you saw is oh. the gradient of f equals lad times the gradient of g. There's only one constraint. Okay, so you only need one Lagrange multiplier. When there's more than one constraint, you need more than one Lagrange multiplier. That's the part of missing. And then, I, and then where, where g of x1, x2, x3 is equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3. Okay. And then I substitute the condition, and I also have the following condition, g of x1, x2, x3 is equal to 0. Okay. So I have to solve this system of equations. Okay. Like that. I have two equations. And actually, there are four equations, right? Because this actually comes down to four equations. Three from the gradient condition and one more here. I have four equations and four unknowns. X1, X2, X3, and lambda. It'll come down to what is the gradient of f? The gradient of f is, is easy, right? The gradient of f is simply do the x1, e to the x2, e to the x3. Okay. They have a partial derivative with respect to x1, partial derivative with respect to x2, partial derivative with respect to x3. The okay. gradient of g is 
simply 1, 1, 1. Okay? And so now I have the following equation. I have that e to the x1, e to the x2, e to the x3 should equal lambda times 1, 1, 1. And I should also have an x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 0. So there's some nonlinear equations to solve here, right? How can you have 1 lambda and then, I mean, a single lambda and multiply by and equals all 1s? This is a great new chief. This is what it's telling you. This is what the condition is. So lambda is not a vector, right? No, lambda is a scalar. A single scalar? A single scalar. Remember, I said the gradient should be parallel to one another, so it's the, it's the constant of uh, that makes them parallel. Okay. That, that makes them the same when you multiply by them. Okay? You just have two parallel vectors, that's the point. The gradient of f and the gradient g should be parallel in order for the optimum to happen. Okay? Oh, yeah, because they're tangents. Yeah, because it's, it's like the surface, one surface, the level surfaces of f. Uh -huh. Level surfaces in the level surface of G. Okay? G is just this plane of the origin. Okay? So then you're looking at surfaces that just touch this plane. Okay? This G equal to zero. This is F is equal to a constant. Okay? Level curve. Okay? So then the gradients. All the easy x's have to be lambda, okay, so that means that x i is equal to log lambda when you solve that, okay? i goes from 1 to 3 for the first equation. Then you plug that in to the second equation, plug that in here, okay? You see that? This has to equal that. This is really three equations. E to the x1 equals lambda, e to the x2 equals lambda, e to the x3 equals lambda. I can solve that for x in terms of lambda. So and you plug it in to the constraint, and that gives me an equation for lambda. So it's like log lambda plus log lambda plus log lambda equals zero? Right. Three log lambda solve? equals zero, that means log lambda equals zero, that means lambda equals to one. Okay. <laughs> okay, so actually this is so does this always work? It works pretty well. Like range multiply? Yeah. For multi variable cases, it always works? For multi variable constraint optimization. Again, the not, there are the Lagrange multipliers are always scalar, but they may be one, one of them. If I have two constraints, I get g equals zero and an h equal to zero. Then I need two Lagrange multipliers. So then you have gradient of f equals lambda one, gradient of g plus lambda two, gradient of h. Okay, linear combination of the gradients. Okay, so it's pretty nice. Yeah, I just took an easy example that worked nicely. Okay, you have equal to one. So that means that xi is equal to log lambda equal to log 1, equals 0. And that gives you all the x's to 0. And I get you the lambda equal to 0, equal to 0, equal to 0, equal to 0, equal to 3. Hopefully that motivates you a little bit. But the method is to set up the equations, try to solve the first one for the x's in terms of lambda, then try to figure out what the lambda is by plugging into the constraint. And then plug back in to get your x's. So go between the 
mixes in the lab, if you can separate them nicely, then it works. Sometimes these equations are not so easy to solve, but this is the key thing Okay? W1X1 plus so on plus WL 
the campus bar or something else. That's your stratified estimator. That's what you always have. So there's no there's no option as to what that is. And that is always given like that. Now then the variance of X bar also is there's no funny business is what that is. That's just w, it's just the sum of the variances of these individual components. So W L therefore gets squared. The variance of sigma so the variance of any one of these subpopulation means, uh, sample means, this is a subpopulation sample mean. Sample mean of the cost? No, sample mean of the variable, whatever you're doing. Oh, okay. Okay? Like in the subpopulation audited value. All right? So the average of audited values from the Ferraris. Remember? Okay. <laughs> The luxury cars or whatever, okay? And then you have this variance there, and then you have the sample size down there. And there's no, I'm not going to put the pop, finite population corrections in here, because otherwise it probably becomes intractable. It's just about too complicated, okay? So that's what the variance of the stratified estimator looks like. Okay, now the point is in part B, minimize that subject to a given cost. Part B, we want to, this is, what is problem 754 part B? Minimize that thing, the variance, find the best possible precision on the estimator subject to a specified cost. Not subject to a specified sample size, which was the optimal allocation. Remember in the optimal allocation you specified the certain sample size, total sample size, little n, is the sum of the little n sub l. Alright? You specified that as given. Alright? That was typical. But here, I want to minimize this quantity subject to not the total sample size being fixed, but the total cost. Being fixed. Fixed. Okay, capital C. So capital C is a constant. It's also the name of the cost. Yeah. What does that have to do with the variance? Or, well, well with the, if I, depending on how much money I spend. Okay, let's say. Let's say I can spend a thousand dollars or whatever. Okay. Now, according to this, the, the, this, I mean, I can choose my subsample size in lots of different ways, right? Man with the C sub. Maybe C sub L is the, is the most. Maybe C sub one is the highest of all the C's. So which one? I could put all my I could all put all my money in subpopulation one. Okay. That wouldn't be too wise though, because then I'll get this kind of variance. So which one's F? Which one's okay. G? That one's F or this one's F? This won't get into variance really because I have to have at least one sample size from each one. Um, what's that again? The F and G. C what's the F? gradient F. F yeah, you gradient. always take your F as the objective function, whatever you want to minimize. That's your F. Uh, then subject to this is your G. Okay? G is a function of N1 through N L. Alright, capital L. So this is my F of N1 through N L in part B. And then it's going to be switched in part C. Okay? That's my objective function. Alright? And this is my G of N1 through N L. There. have a sum of terms, there's only one independent variable in each term, 
So the partial and the partial derivative of the whole sum is just the derivative of the corresponding term. Okay, single term. So this is uh, gradient of f is simply minus w one squared sigma one squared or n one squared minus w two squared sigma two squared n one squared. So on to the last one minus w l sigma squared sigma l squared n l squared. Okay. And gradient of g is real easy because g is a linear function. C1, C2, and so on, C sub capital L. All right. Now I have to solve gradient of f equals lambda gradient of g, and then g equals to capital C. Okay? That's what I have to solve. So what is the answer? The variables, they're, again, they're, they're L, capital L plus one variables, not only the little n's, yeah, but the lambda, right? The capital C's are constants, the W's and the sigma's are constants, they're all known, there's no way this problem. Okay? Don't worry about it, you're not going to actually have to calculate anything in terms of them. I can actually get numbers. I'm just going to get expressions. So I have to set, this is going to be lambda C1, this is going to be lambda C2, and this is going to be lambda CL. So it looks like it's, it's just like you write down one equation. So this is if and only if um, minus W L squared sigma L squared over N L squared is equal to lambda C L. Okay? L goes from one to capital L. And then I also have to have that um, C zero plus summation C L N L is equal to capital C. Okay, so these are the solutions. This is easier to solve now, these equations. I mean, because I can solve, okay, the only variables are the NLs and the lambda. Everything else is just a constant. you got to give your wits about you. This is a constant, that's a constant, that's a constant. So those are just fixed numbers. I'm not trying to solve for them. I'm trying to find, okay, the method that I used before, find the variables in terms of lambda, put those variables in here, therefore solve for lambda, then plug back in. Okay, if I can find the NLs in terms of lambda, okay, then I plug in here. This has no lambda in it. Okay. Then I'll, all the NLs will be gone, I'll just have expressions of lambda equal to this, and I'll solve for lambda. Okay? And I go back and I'll get my NLs. But well, you got the CLs and the Those are just things just stuck in there. Okay? Deal with them. Okay? <laughs> algebra. Deal with it's algebra. It. Okay? So I have. Okay, the easiest way maybe is just to sort of get the lambda and, uh, in the actual form of the way the lambda comes in. Because what you do is you solve for NL over here. So you get this this thing. This is the basic expression. It tells you how NL should be. NL squared should equal WL squared C sigma L squared over CL. Okay? And then this this lambda, and then sometimes, some, uh, then I'm just, I can type, say, then times uh, minus 1 over lambda. Okay? That I can rename as a constant of proportionality. What you're saying is that NL is, is a proportional to WL sigma L. That's exactly what it was in alpha multiplication, but now the change is divided by the square root of C L. So it's directly proportional to the subpopulation proportion, the subpopulation standard deviation, and inversely proportional to the square root of the cost rate. All right? Okay, the bigger the cost, Smaller, you're gonna, the smaller number of samples you're going to put in there. Okay, that's not. Okay. According to that rule. So that means that NL, and that, so in other words, instead of writing the square root of minus 1 over lambda, this is kind of a, obviously lambda is negative. Well, no. Instead of writing that, I'm just going to say NL is, is some constant K. 
times WL sigma L over the square root of C L. Where the constant K now can be determined by putting in this constraint. The constant K is not determined by the sum of the sample sizes equal to little n, because that's not the criteria. Okay, I'm not saying there's a hundred samples total. I don't know how many samples total are going to be until I actually calculate it out. Because that's not the criterion. The criterion is that it costs a thousand, but I get a thousand dollars to spend. Okay, they tell you how much money you're going to spend. Okay, then I want to get the more precise estimator right here. Yes. Okay, assuming that I know all these little parameters. My smallest variance estimation. Okay? So now I plug in here. And so then I, I did this part, I solved for NL, okay, which I'm just I'm just doing a little filling around and doing the algebra, taking a square root, and then instead of writing the square root of minus one for lambda, I wrote K. Alright? Uh, or L. Ooh, L K is not like another index. This is a constant. Okay? Maybe we should put okay. Different notation, but you write it on a notation too. Not here, make, make it clear. Okay? This is for little L goes from one to capital L. Okay? I'm going to plug that in here and figure out what little k is, and then I'll be just about done. Unless you want to find an expression for the minimum variance, which you could also do. And you only ask for the optimal allocation. So, I get the capital C. Should a minus capital C naught, I put the C naught on the other side, should equal summation CL. Now I have to put my NL in. That's K naught WL sigma L over the square root of CL. That will go from 1 to capital L. Okay? And so that's going to solve the K naught. What's going to happen here is that the CL over the square root of CL, then I'm going to get so that's one of the square roots. Under the square root of Okay? So this is summation of algos from 1 to capital L. So I'll pull the K naught out. Uh, w L sigma L square root of C L. So instead of a sigma bar here, sigma bar, remember, was the summation W L sigma. You're going to choose a notation. It's a different sigma bar, which equals sigma bar of all the CLs greater than 1. Right? Which corresponds to the Costs, the cost rates being constant, which corresponds to just you know, fixing a thousand dollars means fixing the sample size. Okay, total sample size. Right? All the CLs are one. If, if all the CLs were one, you just fixing the cost means fixing the total sample size. Okay. So it's consistent with what we had before. It's just another. So all you're really getting is the square root of the CL business. Okay, and uh, K, therefore, is equal to you know, C minus C naught over this single bar looking thing. Okay, and plug that back in now and you get your final formula for N. Then I can plug everything back in and get a formula for the variance, for the minimum variance. So then you get, therefore, NL, now I'm done with the Lagrange home fire problem. NL is equal to C minus C naught over the summation WL, CL, excuse me, sigma L, square root of CL. You can see why people put in another, and now this, this, you might want to also put it, uh, so-called substitution index in here, so you're not getting confused to what this is. This is a sum on all the L's, so sometimes I'll put in a different integration variable. Okay, like uh, P or something. P equals one to capital L. Think of P just, you know, why like that. So you're not confused, because that's that's a constant down there now. That's that's this is just some constant. I could call a sigma a double bar or something. Okay. It's a sum, it's an integral. It's just some number, okay? So it has nothing to do with the variable index. That's why I put a different index in there, in that formula, so you don't get confused. It's a good practice, okay? Times C 
sigma L, because otherwise you have sigma L and you think you're going to cancel it because you got sigma L upstairs and sigma L downstairs. So it's like, oh no, I can cancel those. Don't do that. Okay, you'll be messed up. Okay. So there you go. That's the constant front. That's the it's over square root of C Ah, uh, yeah, it is. This one was times and this one is over. Right, very good. That would have really messed you up. Okay. So now. <laughs> There it is. Now, plug that in here. Okay? Those are the optimal allocations now, in terms of all the parameters. Now, plug in here and find the actual formula for the variance. Good. And the minimum variance. <laughs> okay? <laughs> and the dollar signs should cancel, right? This is dollar signs. Dollar sign, for example, is the square root of the dollar sign. Well, there's another square root of the dollar sign. So the dollar's already canceled here. Okay, that's good. All right? Oh, wow. There's two squares on the bottom, and this thing up here. So now you plug that in. What's going to happen? One of the sigmas, let's see, this was a square here. I somehow thought it got erased. Okay? So you're going to get the square to seal on the top again. All right? When you get that, when, when not, you're going to cancel one of the powers of sigma L and WL. The denominator of that square to seal is going to go on the top. So you're going to get exactly what it should be. So this is going to, the minimum variance, therefore, minimum variance. Is equal to C minus the C minus C naught is going to be downstairs because the NL is downstairs. It's one over C minus C naught, and you're going to have uh, this thing, which was in the downstairs, is going to be upstairs. So make sure P goes from one to capital L W P sigma P or root of C P. Okay, and then I'm going to get another factor of that. Times summation sigma L W L squared C L. I'll go to the capital. These are the same. This is what's going to happen. Because all these constants, this is just the constant that's going to come out in front. And then, this is the constant that comes out in front. And then, because the square root of CL wasn't a denominator, I just erased it. No, here it is. I have this in the denominator. It's going to come up upstairs. This is the denominator. The denominator. Okay. But your sigma L and W L are going to cancel this power. Okay. And so you're going to get sigma like this. Okay. So then, these are just two sums, the same. So it simply is the sigma bar squared. Okay. So make sure P goes from 1 to L. W P sigma. So you just come up with a sort of a, a different, so this is like your sigma double bar divided by C minus C naught, okay, square, okay? It was an easy formula. <laughs> Good lord. Anyway, it's not, it's maybe double bar, it's not the right word, but anyway, maybe we can put a dollar bar, okay? <laughs> dollar bar. <laughs> Anyway, make some notation on it. Okay, there it is. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm teasing you a little bit now. There's a formula that makes, it makes sense. Okay? Instead of in the denominator, you have your cost of the denominator. But then you have the dollars inside of it, too. So, and you have your optimal allocation. What's part C? Part C has reversed this problem. What? Yes. Now they say, okay, I know how precise I want my problem. <coughs> I know how I know what I want for my standard deviation or my variance of my estimator, of my stratified estimator. I know how precise I want, and I'm only going to go to that precision. How can I minimize cost? Let's say I wanted the mu plus or minus, uh, let's say we're talking about, uh, what we're talking about, the inventory of automobiles, mm -hmm. let's say I wanted to know mu plus or minus, the average inventory plus or minus $100, now that's pretty precise. But if I wanted to, then that means the standard deviation 
Let's say that's one standard deviation. Okay? So let's say I want my uh, standard deviation square root of the variance to be $100. Okay? Estimating the overall inventory. So you're minimizing the dollar? So now, now I'm going to specify that's how much, that's what my variance, my standard deviation is going to be. My standard deviation of the stratified estimator is going to be $100. All right? This inventory problem. Now, how do I minimize the cost of um, actually sampling to get to that level of precision? I'm going to get to, I don't even know what my sample size is going to be, not even close. Okay? I need to, but I need to get to that precision. So, give the precision. We're looking for the animal sample size? I want to minimize the size? cost now. I want to minimize the cost. I'm going to specify the precision. So, we're going to find N? We will find little n in the end, and we're going to find, always we're going to find little n1 through little n l. Okay? That's the allocation. And the sum oh, will be the total sample size. Okay? And but this doesn't really relate, because again, it's the cost that I want to minimize, not the total number of samples yeah. I want to minimize, the total cost. Okay? I'm trying to minimize the cost. Now, instead of minimize the variance. Okay? I give you a certain amount of money, and now do it so that you can find it. Most precise estimate. Right now, I can get that. I want. I already know how precise I want the inventory. I already have my game plan worked out. Okay, now I want to minimize the cost. How do I allocate the ends to do that? This is real life, isn't it? Almost. <laughs> real life on the board, anyway. <laughs> real life. How is that real life? You actually have to do calculus for your job or something, right? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> okay, maybe not. All right. Somebody has to. Maybe. Well, if you're doing pharmaceutical testing or something like that, this might be a high gain kind of problem. Yeah. Anyway, it's just one of the techniques in your toolbox, and I just want to make sure you know how to use it. Okay? So, let's go ahead and then to, for part C, you want to minimize, it gets a little bit hairy. But you want to minimize now C. The gradients are the same as before. Subject to. Now V naught, V is fixed. V equals summation uh, WL squared C L squared over N L. L goes from one capital L. What's v? fixed? That's going to be the variance. I'm going to fix the variance. Instead of saying the standard deviation is 100, I'm going to fix the variance as 10. So we know the variance, right? Yeah, you're going to fix that. V is going to be fixed. So I can call it V naught if you want. All right? To fix the number. I didn't call the capital C a C naught because I already had a C naught problem. All right? Which is the overhead cost. So that's your G now. This is your G. So the gradient of G is now what the gradient of F was before. Minus the short L squared over sigma L squared over N L squared. Dot, dot. Okay? Dot, dot. Okay? And your gradient of F is what the gradient of G was before. The gradient of F is C1, C2, so on. So now the the equations for solving the NL is going to be exactly as it was before. Okay. Except um, just about yeah. Um, except um, still going to multiply that by the land. The land is going to come in a different way, but basically this is going to be uh, the same equations. Why is the land a different? Okay. This is going to come in a different way. It's going to be on the other side. Okay. Lambda is going to go to one of the lambda. Okay? So that doesn't matter. Probably what I'm going to get, though, is the same. What I'm going to get by solving these equations is that NL is still going to be K, some K, times um, WL sigma L over the square root of CL. That's not going to change. So that equation is going to come out the same. 
constant proportionality is going to come out different. The software would have to plug into this equation. So to actually figure out what the allocations are, I have to calculate K. Because I don't know what the total sample size is. If I know the total sample size is, I just add these up and I calculate K that way. But that's not, that's not the game. The game is to plug these in here. Okay, and figure out what K is. Honey, why are you... Now so plug these not... in here. Plug I in thought here. this is a constant, though. K is a constant? Yeah. I don't know that constant, though. This is an undetermined constant, but I can determine by putting this constraint. It was like the square root of lambda or minus lambda or something like that, right? That's what that is. So the solving for that k naught is the same as the solving for lambda. I'm just making it less complicated because I don't have to get that precisely, okay? I'm trying to skip a lot of thousand steps. <laughs> okay. So everything was as before, but now I plug in here. And so that gives me a different version of the k naught. And then you apply it back in get the minimum cost, okay, after everything is said and done. Okay, so it looks very similar as to the other problem. Okay. You, so you plug in N out. So plug this into the constraint. You always, you find, you find basically N out in terms of the lambda, which now became a K naught, mm -hmm. right? Then you plug into the constraint to figure out what K naught should be, right, where the lambda should be. I don't know what that is. I, I know everything else. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. So I plug it in here. What's going to happen? Again, one of the WLs and the signals will, will cancel, and you get uh, V naught. This will give out that V naught should equal, there's a 1 over K naught, because there's a K naught in each of the ends. Okay. There's a summation WL, sigma L times the square root of CL. Okay. That looks the same kind of calculation that I had before. K naught now is exactly analogous. K naught is V naught over absolute summation WL sigma L square root C. Well, I should put P here now, so you know maybe. I thought it's the other way around. No, uh, I should yeah maybe it is. <laughs> okay. So that's one over K naught is that. Okay, so this is so it's W P sigma P. Yeah, so it comes up to the other side. I mean, that's the difference, yeah. Um, K what's the difference? One over the previous K. Okay? And then you multiply it again. Okay. And then you just go ahead and plug it back in uh, to get what your optimal allocation is. Okay, therefore. And L is equal to summation W P sigma C squared C P over P naught, those who want to capital L, times sigma L W L to the square root C L. All right. Then you can plug that into the cost function if you want to minimize the cost. Therefore, minimum cost. is equal to C naught plus plug that thing in over there. Uh, this doesn't look right. Did I make mess up my square root of CLs again? Yeah. Um, no. Yeah, this should have been a divided by here. Okay. Oh, yeah. I forgot my divided by again yeah, before. So then when you plug in to that first equation all the way to the top, first expression all the way to the top left, the CL times this, again, the square roots will cancel. And you'll get C naught plus summation WP sigma P squared CP. This is why it's easier to calculate squared over V naught. Square? No, not, not V naught. V naught is not square. So units of the variable squared divided by the units of the variable squared. The square root of dollars is squared. Dollars. WP is unitless, sigma P has units of the variables, CP has units of the 
of dollars a day. Similar, very similar answer. In the end. Can you plug this in there? Plug that in here. Okay, the C not L out. This is just a constant. This is just a constant. CLs cancel, I get sigma L W L times the square root of C L. Oh, okay. summing that L goes from one to capital. So we just so get the square constant again. Okay. Okay. Alright. So it's it mostly a lot of carrying things along is what the method is. Just rewriting the things a million times. Okay? <laughs> lots of places for mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> There's lots of places to check, too. And you know, in the end, you got to have the right units. That's why I'm always doing the uh, units check. The units of the variable, because that could have been, it didn't have to be dollars, but I might not have been working in. It might have been working in feet, okay? How does this work out in dollars? WP. Okay. Sigma P is units of the variable. Let's say it was feet. That's dollars. Okay. Feet squared. Yeah. It is a feet squared down here. But there's That's another variance. square root of feet. Square root of dollars. Squared is a dollar. C is a dollar per unit. Percent. Percent. Uh, dollars. That's the square root of dollars squared, which is dollars. This is dollars. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Yes. So, okay. Sigma P is not in dollars. No. Sigma P is in feet. It could be in dollars. If it is in dollars, then this is in dollars squared also. Okay, B is in units squared. It's units of the variable squared or units of the variable squared. Okay. So the units of the variable cancel. <laughs> All right. That's what we draw on multipliers. Maybe we should go back to the review. We have about 10 minutes or 5 minutes to look at the review wow, sheet. The sound took all that time. Yeah. Maybe we should work with the last problem first. Problem 6. Okay? Because that's going to relate to this business. Or unless you want to do this, let's just have a look at the problem. I think it really what it is is just a rehash of the, of the uh, stratified sampling business. And the same thing with problem 5, is just a rehash of what is ratio sample, you know, what's the ratio estimated, okay? Oh. So I say in this problem six of the review, do you need a copy of the review test to look at? On the test, we're not going to have any of the formulas, huh? Like the ratio test? The I said I was going to give you, okay, that's what I said I was going to give you today. I'm going to give you table, page 214. I forgot, I was going to become armed with all that stuff. I'll have to promise you next time that I forgot to do that. You're going to get the table, page 214. You might as well, oh, that's uh, this little table that tells you one variable answers for the variance of the estimate, the estimated variance, all that stuff. Okay, hopefully you know how to interpret that. I'm going to give you the, the uh, table of normal probabilities, uh, appendix A7. I'll even give you the equation of the standard normal density if you want. Okay? All right? Or A7. 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 Appendix 7. This one right here. Standard normal. Oh, okay. Standard. okay. I'm going to give you those two things. Then I'm going to give you um, something else, maybe. Seven really tough problems. <laughs> um, I'll have to give you uh, the variance Y bar R, probably. And the bias of y bar r, so like the corollary a and b on page 225. So you wanted to memorize those stupid formulas. Which ones? <laughs> the, y bar, the expected value of y bar r. Y bar r. And then the uh, variance of y bar r. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so the ratio is. Oh, what about the s of y bar r squared? No. You have to know. You just have to know that if I need to calculate the variance of y bar r and estimate it, I plug in all the population parameters. Capital R in place of little r. Cap little s squared to back in place of sigma, sigma squared, and so on. Okay. Row hat in place of row. Okay. That's all it is. 
we're not going to give you that one. Then with the stratified sampling business, um, I give you the um, theorem B. Theorem's A and B, whatever. You know, on page 229. I'm not going to give you everything. Wow. Proportional sampling is obvious. Optimal sampling, you should remember for one day. Okay? Oh. Besides, you could, you know. The, the oh, I don't want to give everything. Otherwise, I just give you the whole book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let us see the book. Oh, no. <laughs> well, no, what, I had, what I had proposed before class is my kids do matching questions in grade school. So, you know, we have on the left side, you know, probability statements and, 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 and problems. And on the right side, a list of equations. You draw a line from the equation to the problem. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty good. much what the final exam is going to be anyway. Okay. <laughs> Except that I actually make you apply the, the equation. So that I know you know how to use the dang equation. Okay? So. Not for this test. Well, I'm going to give you the cheat sheet. Yeah, it's going to be four pages. Or at least three. Two. Two pages. I'll just give you these pages. I'll just give you those, those, those four pages. All right. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So what is problem? What does this problem look like back here? Problem number six. It says we're interested in the average value mu of an inventory of a thousand items. The inventory problem. We know that seventy-five percent of these have a low value, while the other twenty-five percent have a high value. And thus we have two strata: the high, low thing you had in your homework for today. Okay. We take a simple random sample of size little n sub l from the shadow of low values and independently sample of size little n sub capital H from the shadow. All I'm doing is repeating the theory and the method of the chapter. Okay? And you know that there are 750 low valued items, 250 high valued items. Alright, so you you know, I'm just recapitulating the method. And I'm calling the little nl and little nh. Assume the total sample size just is little n equals little nl plus little nh equals 100. So I'm not doing trying to minimize the cost or anything. I'm fixing the sam total sample size at 100. Assume that the subpopulation distributions of the inventory values are. So these are the actual. You understand what those are hopefully by now. <laughs> One of them is the low is sigma and the high is two sigma. Some positive sigma. You find the stratified estimator by this. Well, that's exactly what it's supposed to be. 0.75x bar L. There is no option there. That I wouldn't have to tell you that. Okay, I do here. Is everybody clear about that? X bar sub S. There's no there's no wiggle room in there. That that is that it always comes out to the formula capital W1 times X bar sub one plus capital W2 times X bar sub two. The W's are always known. So you're giving the answer for half the first one. I didn't say much. They calculate the mean variance of X bar and S in terms of sigma in each of the following cases. Well, the mean doesn't come out in terms of sigma. The mean is trivial. The mean is just mu. Okay? Mu is not given, right? Because no. this is an unbiased estimator. The mean of x bar sub x is mu. No, it's not given. So we just put mu out. Yeah, I should have said in terms of sigma and mu. That would have been a trick here. Okay? Because then you know mu. <laughs> we would just say variance. The mean is trivial. Yeah. In this problem. Okay? And these are the following So I say I specify the, the allocation of 50 each. I specify the allocation 75 and 25. All you got to do is pull out the formula for the variance of the stratified estimator, including the finite population correction. So that would be included here on theorem B on page 229. Finite population corrections would be included for those answers. Find the optimal allocation and then compute the variance of X bar S in this case as well. All right, now that would be ignoring the FPC. I should have said in part C, ignoring it. Because the optimal allocation, um, otherwise, is a little bit of a harder problem. 
remember that the FPC has ignored an optical allocation problem. If I didn't ignore it, then... Um, it's undoable. No, it's doable. It's just harder. Way harder. <laughs> Actually, no, it might not be way harder because see, it's a one variable problem here with only two strata. So I could say, or extra credit do with finite population correction as well. Okay? What? <laughs> that would be nasty. It would be all like four hours later. Oh, no. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Forget that. Forget that. We'll just ask you a Lagrange multiplier problem. Okay. okay? That would be more than two strata. Okay? But here, what they did in the homework was they, they changed it up. Suppose I wanted to estimate mu h minus mu l. They kind of like flipped the tables on you. Do you understand how it's not going to be your formula from the book now? So even if you had the open book, you wouldn't be able to just look for a formula for that. This one? No. No, the one in the problem 60b. Problem 60b. Was, okay, suppose I want to estimate mu h minus mu l. How do I do that? First, you have to get the estimator. X bar sub h is not a stratified estimator, minus x bar sub l. So you have to come up with the estimator, which is obvious. There's not much room there. People were, I, on the homework that I turned back here, people were mess, you know, confusing this with this. So when they actually did, in the problem 700, 741, which was the real killer, they were putting mu book value plus D bar, and then there was a capital N here, or something like that. That was this was your estimator for the total inventory value. Mm -hmm. Okay, and people were treating this as one variable, and this is the other variable, and then including the variance of the sum. Okay, this is not correct. This is not a variable. That's a constant. So this is actually equal to the variance of n d bar. Okay. All right. So that was I just that out here. This one, which was the y bar minus the x bar, the variance of, which is n squared times the variance of y bar minus x bar, that's what d bar was. People had a hard time figuring out what d bar was from the language that was written down in the book. So part of the problem is just to read the problems. But I, I tested you enough on that in the homework, I think. Yeah, and that's, that's a major part of the course. Now, uh, and then you form, find formula for the variance of the difference. These were uh, not I independent. These were not independent. Okay, the x bar and the y bar were not independent, but these are independent. What? And there's two strata, because you're sampling from one strata and another strata. Now, uh, one urn and then another urn. This is just two independent samples. Yeah, so they're independent, right? Yeah, they're, these are independent. These are not. Remember, in this case, you had one urn, and then each ball had two numbers on it. Uh, so you have the row. Yes. The yes. So just keep those things in mind. Okay? Stratified estimation is easier, actually, because the, the x bar is really a simple, is a single variable problem with independence. Okay? For the different urns. The only hard part is the only run home part. Okay? So. so, for this problem, then you came up with this estimator, E of this, and to find out, show somebody is unbiased, you actually calculate the mean. That was another thing people didn't do with that stratified estimator. How do you calculate E of N mu B plus D bar? Okay? That's what you were supposed to show. Okay? Mu book value. This is problem 741. To show, you had to actually calculate, to show something that's unbiased, you have to calculate the expectation of the estimate. How do you calculate the estimate, expectation of this one? That's a constant, n mu v, plus n times expectation of d bar. d bar was uh, y bar minus x bar, and I'm saying the don't forget the expectation sign. Expectation of y bar is mu a. So what you got is that the mu b's cancel and you get n mu a, which is the same thing as the tau of a, the total inventory 
and audited values. Okay? Total, total audited value. So the expectation is equal to the total audit value. So it's unbiased for that. I think they can really fly. But really how come the other one's better? How come? Okay. The yeah. ratio is better than the. We can discuss that a little bit last time because we're out of time now for you to take your SCQ. But there was this, what you did, you had these various formulas for the, for the ratio estimator versus formula for the variance of this one, okay, versus the variance of don't use any uh, thing but a simple random sample, okay. You don't even bring the X, don't even bring the X in, okay. Okay, and then you compare those things. I'm so confused. And if you want, you know, I could put that formula in, you know, maybe I could, they have it anywhere here. Um, oh, I can put in one more formula, maybe. But they only have differences. Stratified proportion might be stratified out. This one, though, came out to be the sum of the variance. So this one came out to be, therefore, sigma h squared over n sub h plus sigma l squared over n sub l. And you were going to minimize that subject to n sub h plus n sub l equals blah, blah, blah. Okay? This is in problem number 760. So there, you had to do something different. You had to do something more. You had to apply then, uh, and then I think this was the total sample size of n. Okay? Then you had to either apply the branch multiplier or single variable calculus by plugging in one of the other variables and turn it to the other. Uh, so you can plug in from NH to the NL. You can make it a one variable or apply those branch multipliers. So it was 765P, that's what you were supposed to do. Minimize this. Oh, I'm sorry, variance. Okay? Without po finding population directions, you're supposed to ignore the population was, direction. Oh. Ah, that's why it's this. Yes. Okay. Let's have the homework, and I'm going to leave the room. Somebody needs to take this. And then a six much. Question. Why is it not n squared h? Is it over n squared h? I'm sorry, I forgot my. Uh, yeah, there's no w's here. Huh? What? Why is it n squared? Why is this n squared? Yeah. Because the variance of the sample mean is always inversely proportional to n, the sample size. Sigma squared over n. Sigma squared over n. Just remember that. That's the variance of vector one. Equal sigma squared over n plus time defining population fraction. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's what you got to remember. That's what I have. Sigma squared over n. There's no w's here because I'm not doing a stratified estimator. Is everybody following what's going on there? They just basically switched it up. But the difference between the high and the low stratified. See, I don't understand this. You're just taking two independent samples. Yeah, why did you use sigma squared divided by n? Why did you use sigma squared? Because this is, this is S, uh, sample mean. Yeah. S What's the variance of a sample okay. mean? Sigma squared over n. Could be n squared. No. Variance of a variable n times a variable equals one or n square whatever. Variance of x bar is variance, remember how you do it in the independent case? x1 plus its own plus xn yeah. Yeah. divided by n to total 1 over n squared out. Okay, then oh. there's an ant. X1. Sigma, n sigma squared over n squared, so that you know, sigma squared over n squared. Now you've done your college course. Okay, let's have, who's going to take these? I'm sorry, I can't take them out of the thing. Who will take them? Robert, you want to do it? Okay.
an extra pencil in the library. Thank you. Thank you right now. <laughs> you can <laughs> Okay. Thank you. I'll be in my office later this afternoon. Okay?